down the hall. The kids want to have lunch with him, you know, where his lunch table was designed to be a disciplinary table. Now nah, they want to be there with him, and uh, he is just uh, a rock star um, and a, a great testament to our uh, community. So I had the opportunity to uh, have a, a fun snap, you know, happy snap with him. And with that, that's all. I'm done. Well, while his <laughs> photo's up, um, I know it's not my turn. Um, <laughs> they century selected him as a graduation speaker. Yeah, yeah two years and ago. And because of COVID, he <clears throat> was in that building. That's, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. where he spoke to graduation, and uh, um, he was one of a few that helped <clears throat> save a child, a student that's at right. the school. So yes, he's the. Uh, they love him there. Yeah, that was uh, that was him, the R Junior ROTC program, the school nurse, and the uh, fire station for Woodbine reacted uh, to saving that child. And um, yeah, if it wasn't for those quick actions, that was um, probably three years ago. So and, yeah. And you see him at events, whether in uniform yeah. or out somebody is going up to talk to him it's yep. just it seems like everybody knows him and i'm sure we could probably tell the same stories about the other Every one of them absolutely the other so yeah. yeah that's 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 awesome thanks commissioner vigliotti thank you very much commissioner kyler good morning everybody uh, so over the weekend i uh, did a number of things i had the exciting opportunity uh, to join the carroll county chamber of commerce in celebrating the grand opening of the new location of laughing coffin a hobby shop and social club owned and operated by Rachel Miller and her husband, Mayor Christopher G. Miller of Tawnytown. Uh, it's an awesome place. Uh, it is a, uh, located right across from the uh, police station in Tawnytown, and it's a wonderful group of people. It's amazing the uh, kinds of social activities that occur, and you see people of all ages uh, uh, who attend uh, this particular uh, club. And it's just, it was a really wonderful morning, and uh, it's certainly worth stopping by. Uh, I also had the privilege to join in celebrating the, oh, and there I am with the uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Jim McCarran, and we are uh, trying out the, uh, the computers and the gaming part of the club. Really, really awesome place. I also had the uh, privilege to join in celebrating the grand opening of the brand new Bollinger Park just north of Tawnytown. Uh, Bollinger Park is a natural park with awesome trails, beautiful scenery, a pollinator gar garden, a fishing spot, and more. Uh, they allowed me to say a couple of words and to read a proclamation on behalf of our delegates and our senator in Annapolis, uh, who would have loved to have been there if they could have been there. And I certainly recommend going there. There's roughly about a mile of trails, and then they have uh, of paved trails made out of this kind of uh, uh, rubber mix. So there's a really low impact when you're walking. And then they have a couple of what they call uh, rambling trails that go off from the main path, and they're basically cut through the actual undergrowth and through the woods themselves. So it's a really awesome place and very much worth checking out. And it is dog friendly, which is good to know as well. Uh, Saturday evening, I had the honor of attending the annual Union Bridge Fire Company Banquet. Uh, I try my best, as all of us do, to attend those kinds of banquets whenever we can because it's a, it allows us to demonstrate a small measure of respect for those companies, especially for the men and women who serve in those companies. And it's all, you know, we all know we cannot exist without our volunteers, and we truly are grateful for them. Uh, like Commissioner Rossine, uh, earlier this week, I had the honor of joining uh, Ed Singer uh, from our uh, management board and Bill Jones of Evapco as judges for the Youth of the Year for the Boys and Girls Club at Northwest Middle School. We interviewed four incredible young people who have overcome significant challenges in their lives and who are improving not only their own lives uh, and skills through that club, but who are determined to make life better for their fellow young people. I know we have a lot of concerns about the future of the rising generation, but something like this reaffirms your faith in that generation and that they will rise to the challenges ahead because they really are already doing so in a lot of different ways. Uh, Wednesday morning, I joined the Farm Museum Advisory Board for their monthly meeting. And as everybody knows, they're wonderful people, and they are all set for spring and summer events, not least of which is the veteran celebration on May 5th, so that's a little less than a month away. Uh, you can check out all of the other events that are coming up at the museum at carrollcountyfarmmuseum.org. Uh, last but not least, I had uh, the opportunity with my fellow commissioners yesterday to participate in a combined meeting with the Board of Education 
And those are always important because we, we want to continue to have a good working relationship with them. And it's also important uh, given that this is budgeting season, and so we certainly got a good sense of where they are and what their uh, thoughts were with their own budget as well because theirs ties directly into ours. And finally, as is tradition, I should like to ask Commissioner Kyler what he thinks of the handmade spring gray floral tie my mom made me that I am wearing today. Oh, your, your mom did a very good job. Oh, thank you. I'll yeah. let her. She's, I think she's watching. You can. Did, did, did that mean that she had to then take down the drapes because they weren't all there anymore? Or, or how'd that work? <laughs> no, 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 not for this particular set. Oh, I'd, okay. Not for that. That'll be a future tie. I, I think we okay. may have to come up with another tradition, but just calling it like I see it. Okay, Does Commissioner that mean Gordon, we, you get to follow that. Okay, that's wait, gonna wait, be a tough act to follow. Wait, new tradition. Does that mean we start critiquing Commissioner Rothstein's ties? Absolutely not. No. 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 Well, his are helpless. Fortunately, no oh, one wow. can see socks. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Uh, I don't know how to follow that to begin with, but uh, good morning, Carroll County. Um, uh, as a number of my colleagues have already mentioned, um, myself, Commissioner Rostin, and Commissioner Kyler were in attendance at the uh, ribbon cutting for Boys and Girls Club of Carroll County at the North Carroll Clubhouse at Pantherplex. I'm going to let Commissioner Kyler speak more on that. I'm going to be really brief, but I just want to thank everybody uh, that one turned out, and I think it was just such a uh, uh, obvious thing when you look at the support that this organization gets from you know individuals local businesses it really is it's a community uh, event for this to be uh, able to be set up at Pantherplex and I think it's a great opportunity for the uh, Hampstead area and also want to say thank you again to uh, Senator Van Hollen Cardin and Congressman Rupersberger and Sarbanes for their very significant support uh, with the uh, earmark funding that was able to make this possible uh, it's obviously something I think everyone can agree and support that, you know, anytime we have the opportunity to uh, uh, support and help nurture the youth in our community, it's a very valuable thing. And I uh, just want to mention that this morning. I also want to say thank you to our uh, local librarians and, and staff who are involved in the library system this week is National Library Week. Truly appreciate your dedication and support for everything you do, from books to events to the wide services offered by our library services. Also wanted to mention, as many of us were very aware of this week due to the uh, slight cloud cover that might have made it a little less notable, we did have an eclipse. Um, Westminster Elementary PTO, which was my childhood elementary school, was fortunate to uh, reach out to Exploration Commons, who was very uh, able to assist some of the kids in getting uh, quite a wide array of the Eclipse classes, so they were able to actually uh, experience that firsthand, and a great educational opportunity there. I also want to just mention very briefly a uh, thank you to everyone in the community for their thoughts, input, and comments during budget. Uh, without question, a lot of interest, a lot of thoughts, and a lot of input from our community. Uh, we are receiving numerous emails, to say the least. Um, please just be a little patient if we're not getting back to you as quickly as you might expect. We are answering those emails, but you know, as, as everyone knows, we are also in budget session, and yesterday we had that meeting with the uh, Board of Education. And, uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into budget. I mean, it affects all of us. There's no way that it is not, you know, comprised for everybody of everything that goes on in this county. And it includes a lot of the great opportunities and services we offer this community. Um, I do appreciate the other week uh, Commissioner Rostein mentioning and asking the question when we had some additional requests uh, regarding the potential uh, discussion of tax increases and what leadership felt with that. Um, obviously, we've heard emails of that regarding from the public. I appreciate their input. But I truly appreciate the elected that have uh, stepped up and answered that question because I think it takes true leadership and partnership for all of us to have those difficult conversations regardless, regardless of whether it's budget or any other topic. But I do appreciate all of those that have, uh, have answered that question and given us some more input. Thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Guerin. Uh, thank you. Good morning, Carroll County. Um, a couple comments. I don't know. I appreciate uh, Chris pulling that one picture from the, uh, there we go. So on Sunday, I had the honor of attending an Eagle Scout ceremony at Winfield Volunteer Fire Company for Austin A.J. Dunn. He is a sophomore at South Carroll High School, and he received his, he received Eagles um, with a Boy Scout of America. And it was a fantastic ceremony. And I always, uh, I always, when I go to these events, 
I always talk about how, you know, back in the early 1800s, there's a quote from John Adams, and he talks about how even back then he was concerned about the lack of ambition of the laudable kind for our youth in this country. So he was concerned about that in the early 1800s. And then you go to ceremonies like this and you see all these young people accomplishing all these things. So again, my congratulations to, to AJ and his parents and all the people there that were, uh, all the people there who mentored him through this process. And this is only the second one I've ever been to. So I'm relatively new to these, but I, I, I just, I, I really do enjoy them. And it's just wonderful to see the amount of work that these young people are willing to do for all the right reasons, even when people aren't watching. So I think that's is so important. And what's been mentioned a few times was the meeting we had yesterday with the school board. I thought it was a good meeting. My second, my, my, my favorite part of it was the second half when we, ha I thought had some more pointed conversations and got to ask some much uh, needed questions of the board itself. I personally took away one thing, I guess I extrapolated one thing in particular from that meeting that I think rings true for just about everything that this board contends with. Uh, there was essentially a comment of, well, you need to be careful because when you decide to try to fund things that aren't going to work or make situations worse, then you've got to account for that and you've got to answer for that. And of course, the, the big uh, elephant in the room there was this plan called Blueprint. And in a lot of ways, and I think most of us up here have spoken about this, and I certainly have, that I, I see it as hurting us more than helping us. So as we go forward, I think, you know, the, there's, uh, there's a saying, you know, you know, do no harm. Um, and in the particular case of Blueprint, and a lot of other things we have to contend with that we don't come up with ourselves, their mandates from the state, I think that's always should be in the forefront of our minds is does this really help Carroll County out does this really help the citizens are we looking out for them and uh, for me that was the the main key point I took away from that meeting yesterday in what is shaping up to be a very difficult budget year of course because you know revenues are down across the state and in the county so we've still got some very difficult decisions to make um, but uh, I appreciated uh, the meeting yesterday particularly the second half and um, it gave us, I think, some things to work with going forward over the next couple of weeks. And that's all we've got is a couple of weeks to get this worked out. So that's all for me. Thank you. Just a quick fun fact, uh, Commissioner Guerin. It's about 5% of all scouts become Eagles. So that was a pretty significant event, both for you and him that day. Yeah, I'm always amazed by that, too. And they have to do it. You have to do it before you're 18 years right. old. Is that right? So there were a couple scouts in the room. Seven, trip 733 has its 733 boy B, the boys, and G for the girls. And there were a couple scouts in the room who were frantically trying to complete everything before yes. they turned 18. So I really felt for some of those. I'm learning a lot about scouting. I didn't go very far as a boy scout. So I'm always uh, just fascinated by and what of course, I see there. Commissioner Gordon, being the Eagle Scout that he is, so that, that is worth just throw it out yep. there. Yes, well, yes. It's also, um, I don't know the statistics on it, but Carroll County is a, a hotbed of Eagle Scouts. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, I, yeah. I, I, maybe you know the statistics. Commissioner. I'm not certain the statistics, and I wish I could give we're the number this morning. Yes, average. we're very he we're very uh, heavy on Eagles, and then uh, awesome. Troop 381, which unfortunately has disbanded and formed into with some other troops that was over here at uh, First Presbyterian was probably one of the largest mm -hmm. uh, troops for Eagle Scouts, which myself was included in that. But uh, very, very uh, aware in this community of scouting and all the opportunities there. So, Yeah, I do participate in the Baltimore region, and they do recognize every year the amount of Eagle Scouts that come out of, and as Eagles, yes, Eagle, but the scouting yes. community in Carroll County is by far larger and more participatory than so many others so yeah. that's awesome yes it is great great comments guys and and yeah that and their projects and it, you know they have so much impact on the on the community and uh it, yeah it's it's pretty awesome um on saturday um i ran over to balkers around and i and got to meet um our next senator uh governor hogan and uh 
and it was it was very nice and uh as you can see it, the diverse group came by to talk with him um the press there um i think they all bought pies to take home to their families and uh found out what balkers was like and and it was just a neat event and uh you had the photo of Oh, that's that's my family. We went out to dinner. So, <laughs> you you have a photo of the young girl with uh, oh, that's this morning. We talked about our board of ed meeting. Uh, President uh, Marsha Herbert brought by um, CCA ratified uh, agreements for all of us to see, and uh, which was a big part of yesterday's meeting on why they need the funding. So the question really was, was uh, President Herbert stalking you in the parking lot? Was there stalking involved? I don't know <laughs> if it was stalking, but she was definitely parked in the parking lot waiting. I do, I yes. can admit yes. that. I was there to witness. Yeah, um, and, and it, it was a little worrisome. I pulled in and she was there stalking people and <laughs> Commissioner Gordon was faking it that he was on his phone so he could stay locked in his truck. Uh, I tried, I tried. Sure. What can I say? But uh, uh, I, I guess he's just smarter than I am because uh, I got out. <laughs> do, do you have the picture of the uh, Francis Scott Key student with Governor Hogan? And I can't remember. I thought I sent it. But at any rate, um, Kinsey Bancroft and uh, President Herbert did go to Francis Scott Key on Monday and make sure we had parents' permission to use her name and her photo, but she works at Balkers, and she was also one of the key players for Francis Scott Key in the uh, state finals uh, basketball game. And uh, Francis Scott Key got beat that day, but they were in the state finals, and uh, she was working at, at Balkers, and uh, Rhonda kind of stalked her, and uh, she's very shy, and she's like, you know, I don't need this picture. I don't need this picture. There Just, you know, there she is. And uh, and so she got the picture, and she went back to Rhonda, and she said, I bet there's not a lot of students at Francis Scott Key that have a photo like that. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, and, and he knew he knew what she did. And uh, um, he was very excited about the basketball because, unfortunately, we talked a little bit about wrestling, and he goes, let's, let's talk about basketball. So, <laughs> so, you know, that's how it works out sometime. And uh, that evening, I supported the Ag Center and the Farm Bureau. They had a gun raffle at the Ag Center, and I think 850 people there, and, and just a great event. And... I was, I'll skip around a little bit, um, Tuesday night, they had 4-H awards there, mm -hmm. and they give a commissioner's plate every year. Last year, I think you and I were both there to give yep. it, yep. and uh, it's, it's the same night as the Ag Board meeting, so I stopped up there, did that, and I apologize for some of the crowd there. I did s speak for a minute. And then I sneaked out the back door and went down to the Ag Board meeting. But, and, and the comments I made, I mean, everything on that property is, is so great to be part of. But when you look, look out across the room at these 4-H families, children that do so much work and learn so much leadership, and, and it's diverse. It's not just about animals. It's about crafts. It's about speaking. It's about judging. And, and they learn a lot. Um, two or three people, adults, got awards for 30 and 35 years of volunteering with that program. So again, it's just great families, great people. And then I went down to the Ag Center board meeting, which um, is always a good meeting. And, and uh, at that board meeting, so many of the groups are represented the the 4-H fair the farm bureau the young farmers and and it's it's many more and uh i asked some of their opinions on budget and and uh what we ought to do and it, it it's it's interest it's interesting to hear from them it's uh i look at our ag community in carroll county um some of them uh 
some of them go out and buy seed and fertilizer every spring, probably more than the value of the house I live in, and they know it's going to rain just right and, and everything's going to grow, and I, I just give them credit for what they do. Um, maybe not so much credit. Monday I spent a day in Annapolis. <laughs> Um, and I'll skip to that since you got the picture up. You guys talked about Boys and Girls Club, and uh, it that's it, just it's great. It's great to see what they do. I'm so glad they picked Hampstead and Manchester. It's almost as many square feet there as it is in Westminster. It, it's very close, and of course with that building, um, they have two gymnasiums, an auditorium, fields, and they have a lot of other things that um, Blue Ocean and Copper Mine have made it that they're allowed to use. And uh, um, it just, it's great, and I wish them luck there. We talked about what the, uh, what Washington, D.C. did for them, and that's awesome. You look at these photos, <clears throat> um, it, it's so many families in Carroll County that support all these programs. And lastly, I'll mention quickly, all the students there, it was um, an early day of school because I guess it's the end of the term. And all the kids get there on Carroll County Public School buses. The, they, they have a deal with uh, Carroll County Public Schools that, that they will take them from their school to the facility. And they do some of the same in Westminster. Now, yes. Westminster has some walkers, too. Correct. Because of East Meadow. But it, it's just, it's awesome what they do. And you guys talked about judging stuff. I mean, they do leadership stuff. They do, uh, again, it's, uh, it's, it's a great club. And, and I don't know. Uh, I'm so glad I got to be there. And I think the newspaper said, well attended by commissioners. Well, they, <laughs> and I don't know. I didn't find this out till later. And they might have mentioned it to you. I'm not certain. But there was 127 kids that were there for the opening for a uh, leadership workshop. That's what was going on after yes. we had had the yes. ribbon cutting. So that was quite impressive, I thought, too. Yeah, yeah. some of them, and the timing was, was good, and I'm sure they planned it that way. While they're doing the ribbon cutting, um, North Carolina Middle had already been there. But then East Middle, other middle schools, buses were dropping off the kids the whole time we were talking. And like you say, they went into the media center for a program. Commissioner Kyler, if I can just add in one real quick thing. Uh, Chris, can you put up the slide or the, the picture of um, just about like the eight of us or seven, whatever it was? Just real quick, I just want to share. Because uh, Commissioner Gordon mentioned things could not get done with funding. Um, Congressman Rupersberger supported it. Uh, Senator uh, Cardin, Senator Van Hollen. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. So the uh, the ladies in the middle are the community liaisons, is a way to say it, for the senators. They both attend all of our veterans meetings. They attend our community events. Um, they are the eyes and ears for the senators down D.C. Though that earmark of $1.5 million would never have gotten done if it wasn't for these two, along with the same liaison from Karsh Rupersberger's office. Um, it ain't about politics. It's about community, and these two are definitely it. The other one is uh, the gentleman um, to the left, Mr. Greg Keller. A lot of folks know Mr. Keller and his foundation. Um, this center is the Keller Leadership along with the Boys and Girls Club, I think. Yes. I think it's like yep. a dual name. Yep. But Greg is just, again, um, a community, um, you know, not just philanthropist, but activist. And, you know, um, in, he's involved with everything. He also attends the veterans meetings. You know, he puts himself where, you know, uh, resources go as well. So I don't want to, you know, just to, you know, just show that picture without understanding who's who in the uh, in the photo and the one all the way to the left Kelly Frager she's on the board of uh, no excuse me she's on the board of trustees right. for the uh, community, college. community college because of the engagement the community college and the school system and the boys and girls club it's one community and uh, so she was there as well but 
just wanted to throw that out there. And so. related to that, I'm pretty sure the community college is in talks with uh, Blue Ocean and Copper Mine about using a portion of that <laughs> building. And I think Johns Hopkins is too. So, so that building's getting more and more vibrant. It's, it's got to be tough on Blue Ocean and Copper Mine because almost everybody that they're putting in that building is nonprofit, so they're right. probably not they're probably not making a whole lot of money on everybody. Hopefully, they're they're covering themselves so it can continue. And uh, lastly, for me, uh, well, two more things. Um, I, I spent Monday in Annapolis, and that was great. Got to talk to a lot of delegation, a lot of senators, and uh, a lot of Mako people. And it's we're going to hear more about the session here in a minute, but. It, it's uh, it's so great to go down there and advocate for Carroll County, and uh, Mako has their backs. Our delegation has their backs, and many of the other people too. We we walked around and saw more lobbyists than we'd probably cho choose to see, but but they had some very good comments. And the one thing that I think was somewhat depressing, we talked about the uh, tobacco tax and 70 to 90 million that they're earmarking for education. So I've asked senator, <clears throat> delegates, a lobbyist, so what's that do? And they said that's not even a Band-Aid on Blueprint. Right. Um, they said sooner or later Annapolis needs to wake up and say, we can't fund this. But when's that going to happen? I'd hate to guess. And on segue to that, we had our Board of Ed joint meeting yesterday, great mm -hmm. discussion. Um, it's a good thing we had it there because we ran a half hour over and gave them about one minute to get into their closed meeting. But uh, as Commissioner Guerin said, some great discussions, some great, great questions and answers. And uh, I'm so glad we do quarterly meetings with them that are very positive. And uh, um, somebody said it yesterday, They're, they've been very consistent in their request and their explanations for it and uh, I, I I give them credit I think uh, they were ahead of the curve on blueprint um, like they've been on a lot of things we have a great school system and fortunately some of the big counties are waking up and seeing that little old Carroll County was right and and there are issues identified that are issues for all of the uh, jurisdictions in in Maryland and then lastly the budget and uh, yes it's a tough year and yes we're doing that it's transparent um, I do know people that actually watch us for three and four hours talk about budget I I envy them because I don't think I could do that but but yes and and a couple of commissioners already mentioned uh, we value your input um, and uh, it, it's a tough year and and it's going to be tough to decide it's it's a lot of people that i think contact us and and talk about the budget and imply it's easy to just cut this and cut that and i think we're finding out that's not so easy but i'd, I'd love to hear from people who think we shouldn't adjust revenue what services do you want to cut out um, I think Carroll County's been pretty lean, and uh, it, there's, uh, there's a lot of talk that whatever, there's too many people in this building, too many people in the school building, whatever, but I think when, and I've, I've done that over the years before I was involved here, I'd compare us to Pennsylvania, which is a commonwealth, and each individual school can raise taxes on their own, and each high school is an individual uh, public school system but when you add up the cost um, we're, we're we don't we don't spend more money with seven high schools than than what they each do with one and it's interesting to look at it so again we value your input on that and uh, please 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 keep telling us what we ought to do and uh, Commissioner Guerin you have a retirement I think I do not, not you yeah no yeah. <laughs> oh, wishful thinking, Commissioner Kyler. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Ladies, if you'd like to come up, I've got a I've got a significant 
certificate of recognition for someone who's leaving us. And uh, I have to admit, when I saw this about a month ago, I had to do a double take because I didn't realize we were going to be doing this. So, um, but it is my honor and 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 pleasure to recognize Miss Maureen Dunn, who's going to be leaving us. And uh, I recognize people do have to retire. And I guess if I asked the county attorney if we could stop people from retiring, he'd probably tell me no. We don't not have that power. But this would be one of those cases. Um, so. I have the honor of um, recognizing you, Ms. Dunn, um, for your years of service here, and I'm going to read this certificate of recognition. This is this is uh, meaningful to me as well because we're we're fellow Cavaliers, so I get to I get I get to do this. Um, so I do have a certificate of recognition for Ms. Maureen Dunn, who's going to be retiring. In recognition of over 46 years of dedicated employment with Carroll County government, you exemplified high standards of service while performing the duties of various positions held over these many years, starting as a clerk typist one and two in administration and finance, all levels of purchasing positions, and lastly retiring as the procurement officer in the Department of the Comptroller. Your 46 years, 46 years of public service career with Carroll County government shows your high work ethic and diligence led to positions with increased responsibilities and expanded obligations. We wholeheartedly thank you and, and wish you a long and healthy retirement. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you've got some people who are probably more upset than I am that you're leaving <laughs> with her, um, sitting with you. Um, so. Um, Ms. Dunn, I'm going to let you go first, though, if, if we can get through it, <laughs> or we can come back to you. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> We've got some wingmen here, so they can, they can help. <laughs> um, gosh, um, it's been actually a very good experience for me. I have enjoyed working for Carroll County government. I told my co-workers the other day I'll probably never stop being a Carroll County employee. It's just in my blood. Um, but I have to say the county has treated me well over the years. I you know, don't always agree with everything that happens, mm -hmm. but um, I can't complain for myself personally. It's been a wonderful experience, um, and I'm going to miss the people. I know you hear that all the time. It sounds like a cliche, but it's, it's true. Um, the people are what makes this organization and it's a good organization to work for. Like I said, I've enjoyed it. I've grown up here. Um, and I, it's bittersweet. So I will miss the people. Won't miss the stress, <laughs> <laughs> but I will miss the people. And I, and I thank the county for giving me the opportunities that they have. So thank you. Thank you. Now, I'll tell you that, uh, you know, brief time that I've been able to serve with you in this capacity you know you talk about stress you have not made things stressful for us at all it has been wonderful working with you and so I have to ask what what comes next I don't really have any plans per se um, I'm I have filled out an application to volunteer at the hospital because I don't I don't want to just sit and do nothing I want to stay active um, I've told Jenny and I've told Carrie that I am not leaving the county. I'm not moving anywhere. They can always contact me if they have any questions or situations. Um, so I really don't. I don't have any, any true plans. Um, I might travel back to Hawaii again to see my son and his family. They're still there. I'll probably be there for another year. Awesome. In the military, so, um, and I would, I would love to watch those grandbabies of mine. <laughs> yeah. um, so we'll see what happens. Well, I pray that God blesses you and your family in everything that you do. And then thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you've done for us, not just in the past year and a half, but over your career. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. I would like to say that our motto as a department is always to protect the county's assets and you know Maureen has done that um, she has always looked out for the benefit of the county she has always protected those assets for the county citizens and made sure that we are procuring and spending the taxpayers money the way we should be 
Um, so for that, I'm grateful, and I will truly miss her. Um, we've worked together for a long time. <laughs> um, different areas of the, you were in the, what we called the bullpen down in the comptroller department because she's moved, I don't know how many different I, times. I've been on every floor of the building <laughs> and twice now on the second floor. So, um, but she will truly be missed by everyone and I think Carrie can, I'll I will Carrie's, truly, I will okay. truly miss Carrie's her. She's be been a fantastic mentor to me personally and I know I'm um, a great asset to not only the department but the county um, I know the one thing Maureen said to me just a few weeks ago was that she hopes that she made a difference and I can tell you that you made a difference not only to me but to the department and to the county in the 46 years you've been here yes yeah, so you. we really yes. appreciate you and I definitely will take her up on her offer that she's not leaving the county and I can ask her questions anytime <laughs> as well as I <laughs> and and uh, and I I I respect and appreciate so much what you guys do and thanks for your service years on the other side of the fence trying to sell services to the county I would look at somebody like you and go it's not your money lighten up <laughs> you know but that's how you treat it so I I appreciate that you know, we look at it as it's the taxpayers dollar and we're to serve the taxpayers of Carroll County and that's what we've tried to do <laughs> Yeah, I, first off, 46 years is just an incredible amount of time. I mean, you must have started when you were six or seven. I don't know, but I mean, it's just, it's a long time. We recruit stay. in the elementary schools. I figure you would. Okay, since I've been interrupted from the peanut gallery, I'll keep going. So, uh, no, I just really admire the work you do. And, you know, it's um, the silent leadership. It's the team approach you know i feel like uh we should have an easy button up here and sometimes when things just come very easy because of the way you're presenting things it's like you could hit the easy button and say yep let's move on to next and you've done that nothing i'm saying is easy in that you know in that type but you present it that way with confidence and with the homework already done so uh i really appreciate that um I know it's going to be hard shoes to fill. Um, we will figure that one out. But, uh, yeah, I think you're going to be on speed dial for a little bit, you know, <laughs> with these ladies. And uh, I'm glad you're offering that up to them as well. So that selfless, continued selfless service. So mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Yes, and just thank you for, as they've all mentioned, your 46 years of dedicated service that's impressive to say the least um i'm glad to hear that you know you're planning on spending some time with family and the grandbabies and you know you've got a lot of time to figure out what do you want to do now so i think that's fantastic you have that opportunity but uh i think we all would agree and it's something we don't always do up here but i think we all would agree that you've uh you've left a mark and you've been uh, exceptional in what you've done for the people at carroll county so i just want to say thank you you i appreciate it ready for a photo can we get a photo yeah, okay that's good <laughs> She's not done yet. Okay. <laughs> now let's bring up the riffraff. Oh, I love that. <laughs> the riffraff. I love that. She's not quite done, apparently. That's right. She's <laughs> not done. 
So thank you. And now Commissioner Vigliotti has a proclamation. I have a proclamation for National Public Safety Telecommunications Week. So anybody who wants to come up, please do. Someone else has got to come up. Come on, it can't be just the two of them. I was talking about Fowler being riffraff. <laughs> so I will now read the proclamation for National Public Safety Telecommunications Week. Whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, or emergency medical services, and when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of police officers, firefighters, and EMS providers is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property. And the safety of our police officers, firefighters, and EMS providers is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of the information obtained from citizens who contact the Carroll County Emergency Communications Center. And public safety telecommunicators are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services. And public safety telecommunicators are the vital link for our police officers, firefighters, and EMS providers by monitoring their activities via radio and providing them information to ensure their safety. And public safety telecommunicators of Carroll County have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fires, and treatment of patients. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Carroll County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim April 14th through April 20th, 2024, as National Public Safety Telecommunications Week in Carroll County, in honor of the dedicated women and men whose diligence and professionalism keep our county and citizens safe, adopted this 11th day of April 2024 and signed to the entire Board of Carroll County Commissioners. Thank you, Commissioner. Valerie, all yours. All right, um, so the second full week of April is traditionally celebrated as a uh, National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, so that'll actually be next week. Uh, but we uh, thank you for the opportunity to um, come before you and thank you definitely for the proclamation and for the recognition of the hard work that the folks, some, some of the, whom are sitting here with us today, uh, but um, all of those who you know, respond to those calls and have the honor and the privilege and the responsibility of providing assistance to any of the uh, residents, visitors uh, of Carroll County when they're having a really bad day um, because these folks don't answer the phone most of the time to, hey, how you doing today? <laughs> um, they're answering the phone uh, because somebody needs help. So they, they do a uh, really good job at it. They, it's a very challenging job. They do it with dedication. They do it with devotion. And they are truly indispensable to the safety of our county. Um, just a couple of introductions. Uh, today with me, I have the Assistant Manager for Operations uh, for the Emergency Communications Center, Ashley Bergen, and I'll turn it over to her to introduce the folks that we have in the back. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Yeah, we're very fortunate to have uh, four uh, staff with us today. Um, I'll start with Michael Crouch. He's one of our ECS fives. Um, he's actually, he stayed over. He worked last night. So thank him for <laughs> staying awake for us this morning. Um, <laughs> We have ECS3, uh, Seth Weaver, and uh, two of the floor staff that are currently working, they were able to come up and join us this morning. Um, ECS3, uh, Kim Jones, and ECS1, uh, Catherine Rose. So um, total combined service between all of them would be over 30 years of service, so we're very fortunate to have the, the dedicated folks that we do. Well, I really, I, look, I'm, I'll go first. I, just to follow up on the proclamation, I really can't say thank you enough. I mean, you are the hub that holds all of our emergency response together, and we would be nowhere without you. And, and you're right, the first voice on the phone in the emergency comes from a communication specialist, and uh, it, it, you know, it makes a world of difference, life and death in many circumstances. Absolutely. And I could not even begin to imagine how difficult that has to be on your end to have to pick up the phone not knowing who's going to be on the other side and, and what kind of situation or emergency you're going to have to deal with. And God bless you for doing that. And thank you for doing that. Yeah, understanding the, uh, <clears throat> the importance of first line of offense or defense. And you don't know what it's going to be, whether it's going to be an offensive action or a defensive. And uh, the work that, you know, you then have to navigate the right resources to the right place at the right time. Um, you know, is is incredible. And, you know, uh, fo folks that are um, on those calls that you um, are not the highest paid jobs in the county. But they're also, but, but with that said, 
they're probably the highest stress jobs in the county. So you feel like something's not weighing out and there's a balance. Um, it's very difficult and I know it's very difficult to recruit, train and then retain because of those challenges. So with that said, putting, you know, sometimes saying a thank you goes a long ways. And, uh, you know, there's definitely uh, a thanks that's involved because of this, because of that selfless service, because of that personal courage that you provide, knowing that there's a bit of imbalance associated with this. Um, to retain somebody for as long as you do sometimes <coughs> is pretty, pretty darn impressive. Um, you know, but uh, but we're doing the best we can. I know that. Um, continue to voice um, your opinions uh, to us, allowing us to make the most informed decisions. And uh, I know you're not shy, Valerie, in doing that, but <laughs> continue. And that, that's a challenge to everybody. That's a challenge to all of you because we need the talent in the chairs at the right time, right place. Our sheriff's department depends on it. Our municipalities, our uh, fire rescue, uh, EMS, they all depend on that. So the way we know it best is by the open communications you have with us. This is just a token of appreciation recognizing next week. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank, thank you and uh, everyone here and the ones you represent that aren't here today and and just uh, as they've said it's a, it's an awesome job and you guys do it well i'll just follow up and echo my colleagues uh, comments yes thank you but you know the one thing that commissioner Austin kind of mentioned and i don't think the public sometimes realizes i think all of us have had the opportunity to go out and tour and visit with you all the level of stress and the uh, the unknown of what you're answering on that phone is exceptional. So the ability of your staff and all of the parties involved to to interact with the public at probably in many cases some of the worst times in their life and to to assist them in that moment I think is just exceptional. So I just want to say thank you. Yeah, uh, same for me as well. And I and, and I want to acknowledge uh, to to you and your staff a couple things. One being that I, I know firsthand how difficult shift work is. I mean, I did it for five years straight, and if I had done any longer, it was it was affecting my health. So, uh, you know, hats off to you and your staff and the folks that are here that are doing shift work because it is brutal. It's tough on your body. Um, and then I also want to acknowledge something that was mentioned earlier is I know you're short-staffed. I know you've got, you know, eternal uh, consistent vacancies, and that's just the, the nature of the, the economy we're in, but it hits you particularly hard. So I'm glad we do things like this every once in a while because it, it's an acknowledgement to you and your staff for everything that you that you have to really work through and it's tough and in this case uh critically important and you you've got some some gentlemen there in the back there that i'm sure can attest to that fact they uh it's a team effort so thank you very much to all of you thank you commissioners we definitely appreciate all of the support that you mm -hmm. provide us it is a, it is a community we get it done together yeah, cool you want to get a team photo? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Yeah, this is this is probably a photo where we stay yeah. up here and you get everybody that you want up here. Thank you very much. Okay, now the riffraff. <laughs> and uh, 
Chris, um, let us know if you have a caller. I think you have some cards. Let us know if we get to a topic that it's on. Mine is just for the end. So. Okay. Um, sure. Legislative update. And. Uh, you want me to do this now? Yes. Yes. I think. I don't. It'll it'll I don't bring know if this tears is to be our the eyes. last one, but it may be the last one. And Commissioner okay. Rothstein has something to say. Who'd have thought? I'm sorry. <laughs> I, got, I got a certificate <laughs> of recognition, but so this certificate is awarded to Commissioner Kenny Kyler. No, Mike Fowler. Oh, yeah, Mike Fowler. <laughs> nice picture. In recognition of seven years of employment with Carroll County Government, we thank you for your support as the dedicated legislative liaison to the General Assembly in Annapolis. Your expertise in monitoring volumes, <laughs> that puts it mildly, of proposed legislation and bringing attention to the laws that directly affect residents of Carroll County is an invaluable. Your role as BG&E's governmental liaison to Carroll County until your retirement there earned you the designation of friend of Carroll County and your service and retirement from Carroll County government makes you now family. We sincerely thank you and wish you a happy and healthy retirement as long as you give us good news on this, uh, this morning. Oh, well. <laughs> well later. You know, and, and that's the question. Do we do the photo before or after he gives us the good news? I, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, 2,700 bills that came through this year. You doing this for the last five years, think about that. It's like 15,000 bills that you had to rifle, not all, but rifling through, ensuring that the ones that made the most sense got in front of us for any decisions or for information to share with the community is just, you know, incredible. That's why when I say volumes, it's significant volumes. So very kind. Uh, Thank you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, maybe we can go through this and if he gives us good news, we get a photo. If there's yeah. not so good news, we <laughs> kick him in arson. <laughs> Go away. So that's how it's going to be. <laughs> Just call it like it is. Well, then it's nothing but good news. That's right. <laughs> but in seriousness, it actually wasn't as bad as it could have been. And I think that's kind of how we end up all these sessions, is they start out pretty rough. And uh, people come to their senses, and mm -hmm. sometimes things work out in the end. Um, so you can see they, they passed 1,053 bills. Um, fortunately, many of those are inconsequential. You know, there are technical fixes to state law or changing the titles in state agencies of particular <laughs> positions. You know, so there's a lot of that. Uh, but there's also a lot of very significant uh, things that come through. You know, you talked about the blueprint. Um, that was the one that I think two sessions ago, that's all we could seem to talk about. It was so consequential. Um, this year, it was primarily the budget that seemed to be the, the big elephant <coughs> in the room all the time. Um, they, they did reach a compromise, as we talked about last year, and, and the tobacco taxes will fund education to, to some degree. That's the expectation anyway. Um, and then, of course, the transportation uh, funds that will now allow the highway user revenue to continue at the level at least through 27 um, is, is a big win, I think, for us. Now, of course, that sets up next year um, when all bets are off. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you talked, Commissioner Kyle, about talking to people in Annapolis, and you, know, you hear everything across the spectrum about what may happen that, you know, blueprints never going to change it's always going to be in place and it's going to move as it should and then you hear other whispers that oh, maybe it'll get put off a year or two or three and then everything will be fine um, so that you know all of that remains to be seen I think one thing we can probably expect though is there's going to be tax increases in the next session um, there's still a big hole to fill in the state budget 
So, but we won't speculate about that. Let's talk about what happened this year. So I've indicated a couple of the, uh, the capital project grants at uh, the Manchester Valley Turf Field, Ellersburg uh, Elementary Playground, uh, Hampstead and Winfield Fire Departments. There may be some others. Um, it looks like Senator Reedy's office has been vacated because nobody's picking up the phone there. Um, but he'll be issuing, as he always does, uh, a press release about what they were able to get for the county. But these, I think the only thing remaining would possibly be for the nonprofits. So as far as the things we asked for, we got almost everything we asked for. Um, obviously, the facilities bond passes every year. Sometimes I think Ted and Heidi sweat it down to the end, but I'm always confident that's going to go. Um, uh, Maureen was uh, instrumental in, in helping prepare our testimony to get that threshold uh, increased. And I just have to say, uh, you know, working with her a little bit last year and this year, very humble but very professional person, so I, I know she's going to be missed. Mm -hmm. um, of course, like we talked last week about not being able to get the, uh, the unpaid personal property taxes through and, and what strategy you might want to use for next year. Um, so there's a lot of dead horses in here. I don't necessarily want to beat them, at least not all of them. Um, so we'll, we'll just touch on some of these. Uh, of course, workers' compensation, a couple of those have come through. They, they always do. Uh, you got the one that is, um, adds thyroid, colon, and ovarian cancers to the presumptions for firefighters. Uh, you got a uh, workers' comp benefit for hearing loss. Fortunately, they, they amended out tinnitus, because I think every, certainly everybody in my generation has got tinnitus. Uh, if you had to start compensating for that. Um, also, the uh, additional funding for the Professional and Volunteer Firefighter Innovative Cancer Screening Technologies Program was increased, as you see, from 100 to 500,000, and also makes that program ongoing. That had a sunset to it. That was removed. Um, a couple of uh, HR-related bills, uh, the one about uh, putting a lot of information on the pay stubs that was watered down quite a bit. Um, it does require some granular data to be on the individual, uh, individual employee's paycheck, but the state is required to provide a template for that for the counties, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if most of that isn't already on the paychecks that are issued here. Um, also, the Family Medical Leave Insurance Program was put in place, I believe, two sessions ago. Um, that's been a problem for the state to get the regulations in place and the structure in place for that. So that's been moved out a little bit. The also, also the other benefit here is they have enabled uh, the counties to, um, if if they provide the same benefits, they don't have to participate in the program. And MAKO has actually put together a uh, collaborative with boards of education and MML members so they can form a, a collective and, and minimize the, the costs associated with it. So that, that turned out much better than we thought. Um, of course, the cannabis bill uh, is pretty much in the form that we talked about last week. Um, the dispensary separation is 500 feet. I say at least, excuse me, uh, is no more than 500 right. feet. Um, but you can increase that through ordinance, you can increase that to a half a mile. Uh, the separation from pre existing sites, the sensitive sites, houses of worship, schools, uh, that sort of thing, is, remains at 500 feet. Um, it adds an authorization for you to create a 100-foot buffer from residentially zoned land. Um, it also adds the ability to protest a license renewal under certain conditions. Um, also, you cannot restrict outdoor growing on agricultural land. So that's, that's where that ended up. Do we define sensitive sites? It's, it's defined in the bill. It's defined in the bill. Yes. Okay. And it's, it's schools, um, recreation centers, uh, 
it's the, those kinds of okay. things. Yeah. Uh, of course, the you discussed it. I think this one pretty. After I left, you had a discussion on the, the food processing residuals, and of course that that did pass. And and as you heard there, that was that date was amended to June first. And I know you have some work to do on that one. Um, the PFAS playground surface materials started out with having to remove all materials that may have even a minute amount of PFAS in them, and that was amended down to just no new material being placed. So another example of how something starts out rough and, and ends up pretty well. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we have a little bit uh, of additional standing in clean water uh, action. Fortunately, the groups and organizations that were in, in the original standing bill were amended out. That was going to be very problematic because that was uh, anytime you expand standing, you, you wind up in a pretty challenging position. Um, the PFAS pollution bill remains as we talked about. It defines industrial users and they must remove PFAS down to, I think, what's going to be the federally mandated level um, before they introduce that water into a municipal wastewater treatment plant. Well, right now there is no federally mandated. Correct. <laughs> Correct. And I think, so I think that's close though. It, it is close. I think yeah. this past week. And I think, what are they going to go to four? Per parts billion? per trillion. 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 Per trillion. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so did they, they did take FDA uh, a step, EPA. but there's still work for them to do. And the challenge is for us to put guidelines, us, the state, without, you know, the thresholds that the federal government says. I mean, it's kind of yeah. cart before the horse, but this is a step in the right direction. Um, it is, and particularly it, it alleviates you of yeah, obligation absolutely. to have to treat that when yep. it really should be on the user. Uh, the paint stewardship, uh, that was introduced, I think, maybe a session or two sessions ago, mm -hmm. um, finally did get passed. That's the recycling program that is set up in the retailers. Uh, there's a, a fee assessed to each container of paint, um, and then the retailers will recycle that. So I think eventually that may relieve the county of any uh, you know, necessity of setting up or, or continuing a paint uh, recycling plan. Uh, so on page four, Senate Bill 783, this is an example of, uh, of a bill that didn't get the stake in it. It came back to life. Mm -hmm. uh, this was the Brighter Tomorrow Act. So essentially, it, it incentivizes rooftop solar over ground-mounted solar through the use of tax incentives. Um, this also was the one we talked about that allowed you to assess a fee, I think, of 2500 that got blown up when Carolyn County came in and said, wait a minute, we got over $8,000 right. from, uh, from a developer. Um, so that was eliminated from it. But that's, a, that's essentially, uh, in a nutshell, it's a bill to incentivize rooftop over, over ground mounted, which is a good thing <coughs> for this county. Uh, Forest Conservation Act modifications, it, does, it codifies the current practices in some counties who would identify existing forest as a forest bank as opposed to planting trees and creating a bank and using that. Mm -hmm. um, I think Prince George's and Montgomery primarily were the ones that did that. But it also makes some technical fixes that would otherwise put programs at risk. And um, I will leave it to your environmental folks if you need details on that because this is a very technical bill. Uh, and then the, the, uh, the bill that would uh, create uh, regulation, and li regulation and licensing regime for stream restoration contractors. Stream restoration gets a lot of hate from the General Assembly. I'm not sure why. Maybe there have been some projects that haven't been very effective. I think that 
they tend to wind up with a lot of tree removals associated with it. Um, in discussing it with our folks, um, the stream restorations that we've done in the county have been very good projects and very effective. So um, I don't think this we were really the target in any of this. Uh, the collective bargaining bill for the libraries did did pass um, as we've we've talked about it. It did get um, amended, I think, into a, a, a an acceptable form. Um, it does authorize organizing, uh, but you do have the ability as the governing body because you do fund the libraries that you can reject um, a, a negotiation uh, if you don't have the funds that you can appropriate to it. So it gives you the right of rejection, which is uh, pretty powerful. And then one of our favorites, the, the Freedom to Read Act. So that was passed in the, the form that we talked about uh, last. Uh, you know, the schools can't be defunded. Um, the, the things I think that, that changed over time as we talked um, was that the, the challenges are limited to students, parents, or guardians. So no outside organizations, per se, uh, would be able to challenge. Uh, the books have to remain in circulation during the review period. And the Board of Ed has to adopt a, quote, reasonable timeline to conduct and conclude the review process in a timely manner. So they didn't prescribe what that time frame would be, just that it has to be in a timely manner. So sounds to me like the only thing that really changes, I think, is that the books have to remain in circulation until the review is, is completed, and it has to be a relatively timely process to do and, that. And I don't, I don't know where it'll head. It's sad. Um, but a lot of the librarians, even some of the books that weren't challenged, they would pull them and put them behind the desk because <clears throat> they weren't appropriate. So. The, the libra librarians took care of some of this, mm -hmm. they, and they and have I the authority to do be that. criticized if they do that now or not. But you know, they use common sense and and uh, and would recognize that some of the challenge books probably ought to be pulled while they're in review. But w whatever, it's uh, I hope they're happy. Well, I mean, I think also the challenges of these books to the Board of Education had occurred. A year plus ago it wasn't from specifically students parents and guardians <clears throat> it was from a group correct well other well, I mean, parents though that, not necessarily yeah they are yeah not I mean I thought it was uh, not necessarily I thought it was a group that it, it was backed by a group but it's right. individuals and uh, okay um, I'm not supposed to use this word here but the haters would criticize well that that individual, uh, her kids go to private school, but next to her were two others that right. had school kids in our right. school. So, th this doesn't change a damn thing with that. No, I just, you know, I, I mean, I'm looking at it saying, okay, if it's a parent, a student, a guardian saying something, that's fine. If it's an organization, and they're supporting a parent, a guardian, or a student, that's one thing. If it's an organization that's saying, we do not want or we recommend or we require request, that's a different situation. And it was my understanding that's what occurred. Now, of course, I could be wrong on that, but I don't believe I am. And I do believe it got out of hand. And I do Probably. believe that um, we, Again, what, what, they, they, what this they, does is it shows that we have a process. Books. Oh, it's, I know. There's 11 I, books I, out of I hand. agree with you. And, and what this does is show, at the end of the day, that Carroll County public school system has developed a process, and we're adhering to this process in accordance with this Freedom to Read Act, <clears> the public school system, which is what we want. Where we, how we got there is a different story, but where we are today is where we need to be. It, it, it'll, it'll cost some money for their, our school system to redevelop their policy, to submit it and go back and forth. And, uh, um, you know, it's, it's as sad as individuals that do PIA requests just to cost us money. Well, I know. You know, it, it's, it's, it's pretty sad. And, and like I say, um, 
the one group gets credit for all this, but that group's made up of moms. And a lot of them have kids in school. Now, uh, maybe that wasn't do. their motivation. A, a lot of them do. Some don't. Some don't. And that's why the way it shows here, it's students, parents, and guardians are trying to say specifically, let's identify those folks to so, make those. So even though half of my tax dollars fund the schools, I can't object to something. Because no, you I'm can not a as an individual. I'm not a parent. I'm saying as an individual. <laughs> but they're all I don't know individual. what's so funny about this, but as an individual, you can, and you can talk about it. What I'm saying is this law is saying, and, and again, not to challenge this because we're doing what's right, yeah. is it's saying students, parents, and guardians. And I think it got out of hand when organizations got involved and other organizations got involved and it's like okay let's let's back away from this what's the purpose of this and let's get to the intent and i think that's what this is doing and what it's doing is recognizing <coughs> again the program processes that you put in place when you're on the other side of the street is meeting the intent so we're doing what this is telling us to do yeah that's i think you, you have to keep in mind this is also part of a, a national movement right. right so a lot of the rhetoric that's thrown around really doesn't pertain no. to, right. to to Maryland right um, or certainly to, to Carroll County I think Carroll County was I think misaligned in, in some of the rhetoric um, you know you can say a lot by leaving things out yeah right? I mean you'll tell the whole story so um, so but anyway, that's so I, I chuckled because I, 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 I thought Commissioner Carler made a very clever point. I, I mean, this act in particular seems to suggest, well, if you don't have a kid in the school system, you can't complain. Mm -hmm. Well, if we applied that same uh, standard to the whole county, you'd have half the county residents showing up going, I don't want to send any money to the school system. So, I mean, hypocrisy is something we're used to coming out of the General Assembly. but. Uh, this one seems to meet the mark for that. I, I don't see this as necessarily the hypocrisy, and I don't believe it's a chuckling situation. I believe that as individuals, they have rights to confront and question. As groups, it's a different story. And I think, again, this is not a bad thing. What I think personally, well, sitting up here on the dais. What I believe is a bad thing of this whole Freedom to Read Act is it's an overboard situation that should never be put in place. And it's combining our so. schools, libraries, with the county libraries. And that's what bothers me the most. They are two different entities and should be served and, and should be seen as two different entities. They're funded differently. They share different approaches or not share they they have different approaches um that's what bothers me you know in this uh the other part about it the organizational approach yeah i think is wrong and i like it where it says students parents guardians it's very specific the processes we have in place and uh we've had in place because of the work that you've done um so yeah the the top line is the thing that gets me um but and and, and it's uh it was all driven by hate and uh um one of the questions i ask is like you say schools and public libraries should be totally separated right so i said the public libraries do they have these books oh yeah yeah they have all these books where are they in the adult section i said well i'm confused what's the adult section in a school <laughs> They just, to my opinion, they, they answered the question. But, and we beat on it too much, too. But it, it's, it's just a shame when something's driven out of hate. It's, that's never a good motivator. I agree. And fear. Absolutely. Also on education, the last two quickly, the scholarship program for the firefighters and, and EMS is in place. Um, and the transparency in education spending. So that was not really an issue for this county, as Commissioner Kyle, right. you said many times, the board's very transparent with this board. Um, but that was not the same across the state. 
So they did, were able to get this bill across the finish line, which would require boards of ed to make the uh, governing body of the county aware of their budgets. Going back to the higher education bill the, for the uh, fire, fire, and ambulance, did that, I mean, I, I can look up the bill and, and do my own research, but that did that really move the needle on firefighters' ability to, what is that, a re reimbursement for college? I mean, what exactly? Yeah, I, th I think that it opened up the program to any course that a firefighter was taking if it led to, if it was part of a, you know, a program. So if they're going for a degree, mm -hmm. then it would cover anything within that degree. I think that was the difference. Okay. Um, I, I didn't dig too deep, uh, but I think that's that's the case. Okay, I'll, I'll check that out. A little more out. liberal. That could, be a, that could be a fairly significant one for our county because we've got so many, we've got the volunteers and we've got the county folks, and if they can take advantage of this, then yes. that would be... A uh, number of election-related bills. Uh, one was the protecting the election officials against um, threats, so that that's actually punishable by incarceration uh, and or a fine. Um, let's see, election judges. So there's, as you know, shortage of election judges. So the state board's going to create a marketing campaign to make available to the local boards. Uh, to try to get people to be election judges. Um, it also establishes a leave policy for county employees that serve as election judges, but I do believe that you already had, I think you, you already met basically uh, what the, the bill had, had put in place. Battery safety bill that passed, um, work zone speed cameras, they increased the fines there. And uh, that goes to uh, the administrative costs of the camera programs first and then all the balance to transportation. Um, one bill we didn't talk about too much because it went through a lot of changes, that's this mental health bill, um, Senate Bill 453 and House Bill 576. So since the 80s, we, you know, we moved away from institutionalizing um, and inpatient uh, mental health. Um, it's, it's all outpatient now. But, so what you've got is a, you know, a group of people with severe mental illness who are in and out of hospitals. Um, they, just, they just have a, a very severe problem. And as I understand it, Maryland was one of only three states that didn't have any sort of legal uh, right to address this issue with an individual. Uh, so this bill authorizes a county to establish an assisted outpatient treatment program. If the county does not establish it, the state will establish a program. Uh, counties can combine their resources. If they want to create a program, they can do it with another county or multiple counties. Um, so essentially, the, there's a petition that goes to the court to have the individual mandated to participate in this treatment program. Um, they can also agree to, to participate voluntarily. Um, so it is a court process, but at the, at the end of the day, there's nothing that really legally holds them to it. In other words, you can't mandate them to involuntarily participate, which is, I read that bill several times. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's like you can, you can require them to get into this program, but at the end of the day, you really can't require them. But it does give, um, it does give the state and the county more ability to provide these services to someone. Um, so it's more comprehensive, um, and hopefully that will make a difference. And, and this really goes to, to people, the homeless people you see, they're severely mentally ill, um, and they're just in and out of these facilities all the time. So, uh, this should this should be a help. When it says state will establish, 
that doesn't include state will fund yes it does yes okay that's a good thing because uh, there are counties and the city that are not going to have the ability to establish and fund the necessary um, programs then the amount of beds necessary but the state is coming in saying okay we're going to do this that, I mean that's that's yeah, the, there's because they create these care teams. So they're professionals. There's a psychiatrist and uh, <clears throat> medical professionals involved in this care team. So okay. Yeah. Uh, the homeless shelter licensing program that that began as a as a uh, very challenging to meet. Uh, bill has now been sent to a summer study so now instead of just mandating up front all of the uh, conditions that a, a homeless shelter has to meet uh, now let's study it and see not only what should a homeless shelter be but what can local governments provide because what they were asking for was I think well beyond the ability to provide uh, let's see, and of course the sheriff's salary increase. That bill did pass as we expected. Um, <clears throat> another bill, again, that was challenging um, was a bill that would require, when there was a state highway project that required relocation of utilities, and that would be uh, gas and electric utilities or water and sewer utilities on the county side, would have required you to to, uh, to develop a relocation plan within 120 work days and then begin the relocation work within 60 days, um, which is, I think you're probably the, the best to understand how <coughs> difficult something like that would be. So that, um, that has been sent to summer study as well. I think that a lot of uh, the state's projects uh, Apparently, and they're very complex. There's a lot of utilities in the ground. Um, it, it, it's a challenging, I can tell you from my previous. Uh, BG was always responsive. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to hear the, the opposite. Uh, let's see. And so, last two um, Bay Restoration Fund, which would fund conversions of septic to public systems um, it removes the sunset on that so that will be ongoing now and continue to be funded um, and the last one of course was the the governor's land use bill um, the one that required uh, well I should say affects um, Warfield and we we talked about the adequate public facilities preemption or being removed from that bill so the, um, the APFO still right. applies in that. Any other housing bills he had? There was like three or four. He, they, all they all went through. This is the one that through. They, they were all amended yeah. to some degree. Yeah. Renter's rights yep. was one. Right. Um, being able to deal with vacant buildings yeah. and that sort of thing, yeah. And again, pro a lot of that in the more <clears> urban <throat> areas of right. the state. And then I've given you a long list, thankfully, of the bills that did not <laughs> pass. Um, and ongoing, uh, the, the General Assembly website is uh, really the key to all this. There's, there's a link for all the bills that have passed in 24. And there's also the ability to research bills from uh, probably 20 years of, at least 20 years of previous sessions. Because often that comes up, hey, didn't we pass something back in 2018? Um, that's all there. So ultimately, I think it was a, a successful uh, session in that we staved off a lot of the bad things. Um, I think that being engaged with the delegation is, a, is a, something that really needs to be. That hasn't always been the case um, since I've been here. Uh, it is the case now. And so I hope that you all will continue that, as I'm sure you will. And, and speaking of a delegation, back to the, the grants, I know uh, Senator West and uh, <clears throat> Delegate Stonko 
focused pretty hard on Hampstead Fire Hall and uh, in the last session they lost more than a hundred grand and it, it's tight down there right now with grants and I think they fought hard to get what they could get and I'm sure Hampstead will spend this money but uh, was hoping for more it, it is a challenging uh, if you see each day they've changed the process for asking for money um, you used to go down on a Saturday everybody that was going to get a grant had to go down there and three minutes talking yeah, get yeah. And, and they were encouraged actually to just raise their hand yeah. it was it was absurd terrible use of people's time uh, so now they submit their bill requests mm -hmm. or, or their their uh, grant requests and every day you know there's there's sheets of grant requests that are coming in and uh, so there are a lot I mean they, they grant a lot but generally you don't see a lot in Carroll County I think there's probably this unwritten quota system that uh, you know you're gonna get so much so how do you want to divvy it up and that's really up to the delegation to determine that much of the uh, legislation that did not go through um, Mako was also you know opposed to legislation because of it not being enabling or authorizing um, and saying you will do and we're not in favor of that so I saw some of these that you put down there um, <coughs> you know like the student on the BOE voting you know rights well the state says this is what we want and the counties are like no we you know let, let us choose that you know and we can determine as an example um, so yeah as we've said that that you wouldn't think that most if not all of the counties are on the same page mm -hmm. on almost all of this but they they really are yeah um, because everybody's affected in the same way right. and they want to be masters of their own domain just like mm -hmm. you do so um, yeah just a word about Mako um, that is really money well spent um, you you were down there for a bit on Monday you see all those young people they're very energetic um, the, the, the staffers that work in the counties many of them have already been in the state you know so they're very adept at the process and they they know how to how to work the system um, and the Mako policy analysts which tend to turn over pretty quickly in the mm -hmm. time that you've been here you've mm -hmm. seen a number of uh, new faces um, but they always seem to pull in people that are very effective um, Absolutely. you know they're given a portfolio of issues to handle and they're they're very effective at it they've got good relationships uh, not only with the General Assembly but with the local governments um, so that's uh, I couldn't have done any of this without them and, and they love it, it it's it's uh, Monday was not surprising but um, refreshing during a relatively informal reception they were all talking about bills they were all talking right, about work right. it wasn't it wasn't informal it was very formal and uh, and most would answer questions they didn't have to look at anything you know they they're into it they, they really are they they live and breathe it I mean it's 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 their life it's their social network you know it's their work network and uh, yeah you don't need any old people like me down there anymore <laughs> young people it's a young well Mike I'm, game. I'm I'm gonna slightly disagree with you about that I've always appreciated your wisdom and your knowledge of how things work as well as your grasp on the material and I really am gonna miss having you working with us but you are old thank you I have no question about that I was no gonna say question. experience but uh, you know, if we want to go with that well I have to say that this job was was far less challenging than it was because of the people here you have really committed people that work for the county at at the director level all the way down um, and I've interacted with a number of them um, they really know they're they're part of the business um, they're very committed to serving the county um, they always have the answers they were they were watching this stuff 
themselves. You know, they'll come to me and say, hey, what about this bill? You know, I'm hearing about this from my colleagues in other counties. Can you watch out for this for me? So they're, they're engaged in the process, and I'm sure they'll continue to be. And um, it, it's been a great ride. Yeah. Um, I was very fortunate to, when I, when I left the other job, you know, people said, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. Something will come along. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, something came along, and it was great. Um, you know, it just it, it sort of flowed right right into it because this is the same kind of place that I came from. People are mm -hmm. they really are professional and and really want to do a good job. And um, I think the county, as I've told you, I think the county's in good hands. You guys are really looking out for the interests of the, of the county, and I know you'll continue. And I'm going to miss every one of you. That's for sure. But. Uh, I got a lot of things to take care of. <laughs> <laughs> well, your basement's dry. Basement's <laughs> finally dry. I've uh, I got a mother-in-law in Salisbury that right. needs some constant attention. Mm -hmm. My wife's an only child, so we can't yep. dump that off on anybody else. Yep. So we've talked about that as well. But okay, let's uh, take a photo yeah. and yeah. Yep. move on. Thank you. I'll be around all day if you need to yell at me anymore. <laughs> yeah, I might call you when I gotta renew my badge. <laughs> we gotta renew those. This year. Yeah, I know. Sometime. Yeah. I think they're good for two, three years. Okay, um, before we jump to item two, we have a dozen more items, and I know it's exciting to be here, but does anybody have an objection if we let the public speakers go ahead and do their public speaking and no objection. Okay. Sounds good to me. That's fair. Just a uh, Chris Karolinko. Okay, good morning. Um, I want to speak real quick on the roadway. Get my notes up. Make sure I'm good to go here. Um, so it's no secret that 140 is a dangerous road. It's been subject to conversation for a very, very long time. So I stand here in, for, in front of you guys with a heart filled with fire in terms of my motivation to actually come here and speak with you guys today. Um, my name is Chris Karolinko. I've been a county resident my whole entire life. Um, I have been a volunteer with the, uh, the county fire and EMS uh, since 2008. Um, as a volunteer at Reese, I'd seen my fair share of vehicle collisions, uh, including fatal vehicle collisions along the stretch of roadway that extends through the Reese jurisdiction there, the uh, 140 right there. I remember specifically three fatal car accidents um, that affected me personally, like me responding to it, um, one of which down at the county line, a horrific accident with a mother, a young mother, 30-year-old mother, lost her life um, with a car seat in the back seat, no child inside, a very uh, a panicky couple of minutes while we tried to figure out whether there was actually a child that was in that seat. Um, with no action taken thus far, um, you know, when they rebuilt the, the roadway at the county line, we, there was a lot of hope that they would put in concrete barrier walls and that there would be some kind of physical division between the lanes, creating that lane security. That didn't happen. I think you guys are probably pretty aware of that. With no action taken upon the, by the state, I can't speak to the county as a state roadway, obviously, but you guys are in the position to apply pressure to the state, of course. Um, you know, we rec recently had the tragic accident involves, uh, involving Paisley Strevig. Um, 
in case you didn't know, her, her visitation is today and her celebration of life is tomorrow. Um, I think I speak on the behalf of a lot of county residents when I say, when is, when is it enough? When do we have to draw the line that enough people have died on this roadway in that stretch from Kays Mill down to the county line where there's absolutely no barrier between the roadway? It's a 50, 55 mile per hour roadway where one wrong error, one wrong kind of movement can mean life or death. There was another significant car accident just last week where two more patients were flown to trauma centers where they were seriously injured. Um, it was right on the other side of the intersection from where Paisley lost her life. Um, so I think now is the time where you guys as county commissioners and us as county residents and citizens demand that the state really take action and finally do something about this roadway where we prohibit turns at anywhere other than controlled intersections and we put up concrete solid barriers to keep cars from colliding with each other. That's my, uh, that's my last comment. Time's expiring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Um, and, and of course, this is public comment, not really question and answer, but I'd like to address two things. One, um, Andrew Radcliffe, the district engineer from District 7, I have a current email from him. He wants to set a time and we talk, and he update me about the survey for traffic down at 91 and 140. What I saw at the last public meeting, they were trying to address that intersection my humble opinion in a poor way but they were trying to address it there was going to be some median and only for a short distance and somehow i think we we need to educate the public they were upset that there was going to be a medium and and i'm thinking it it's all about safety you know and then uh secondly on next wednesday the 17th at 5 p.m they will all be at Winters Mill High School, specifically talking about MDOT at Maryland 97 and Botman Valley Road, but all the players from District 7 will be there, and that would be a, a good time to ask them some questions. And just, just to clarify, District 7 of the State Highway Administration, <clears throat> District 7 is our region, um, so. Howard, yeah. Frederick, and Carroll County. Correct, but yeah. Okay, yeah. and thanks. And you're you're welcome to stay a couple more hours, but uh, <laughs> we just thought we'd we'd let you talk. I uh, appreciate you taking me early. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, um, item two: um, briefing for fiscal year performance incentive grant fund application with the sheriff's office. Hmm. You don't you don't look like a sheriff. <laughs> But he's always well represented. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, everybody. Morning. <laughs> so our office is in the process of completing a grant application for the Performance Incentive Grant Fund, fondly known as PIGIF, offered for the upcoming fiscal year through the governor's office. We wanted to make you aware that we are applying for this funding to cover costs related to adding positions by our medical services provider for mental health services and related medical services. This grant is a good fit for these services. The justification falls under the priorities required in the grant application. The grant is recurring. There's no county match to this grant. And the funding was originally established through reform savings generated from Maryland's Justice Reinvestment Act. Specific, specifically, we'll be applying under an initiative to fund collaborative efforts to increase mental health and other treatment services for justice-involved individuals. <clears throat> we continue to see increases in incarcerated individuals needing higher levels of mental health care, mm -hmm. as well as physical health and other services, and this grant can provide funding to cover the additional costs of those services. <clears throat> Currently, approximately 70% of the incarcerated individuals in our detention center are administered some form of psych medication, and they come to us needing various forms of mental health treatment, resources, and or services. Additionally, approximately 30% of the incarcerated individuals in our detention center have various forms of what are called SMIs, such as schizophrenia, bipolar, <clears throat> major depression, borderline, and other types of psychological um, 
issues. The detention center is required to provide various medical treatment resources and services through our medical provider to those needing those types of services. And it's crucial to have sufficient staffing that is dedicated to addressing those needs. <clears throat> our correctional deputies are neither counselors nor nurses <clears throat> and are not able to provide those services. Um, we are incumbent upon providing a safe and secure environment for both the incarcerated individuals and those that work in our facility, um, both our correctional deputies, volunteers, all the other staff, um, vendors, all the people that are in and out daily. So having those additional vendor positions in place will provide the additional services and resources needed to provide that safety and security. So I'm going to They'll, they're going to add a few pieces and then if there's any questions so again today was just a briefing it is a grant for additional services that currently we haven't had so we just want to come over and it's really called the pigs fund it's called seriously the it is actually called pigif wow i know <laughs> and good on you and you this say is a not an face. action item this is no, an information a correct item yes just a briefing so that you're aware hmm. um, so and just to give you a quick idea, um, the, the numbers are just, they, they continue to increase. And the vendor is requesting um, in order to provide the services. And it, a lot of it has to do with safety and security. Um, well, it's interesting that you guys just got, yes. um, um, with Mike here, told you about the, this new AOT thing. Um, the state doesn't even have enough forensic beds to house. Right six individuals that we have that are under a court commitment right now and our average for these types of individuals that have these severe mental health issues is about 46 days which is written on a 10-day court order right. and there's nothing we can do we've tried dragging the state into court you know we've tried to hold them in contempt and because there's just not enough beds forensic beds around we have this problem and so therefore we need these these uh, mental health nurses and, and providers in our jail to just help us as correctional deputies get through the day. There's no doubt. Do we know the amount in the grant that's going to be asked for? So right now we're looking to ask for approximately three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars for the next fiscal year. <clears throat> oh, so so you're it, so the three twenty-five annually is for staffing specific the vendor for the vendor, the not for our staff. Prime care, it's prime care. Mm -hmm. not a Hershey. I mean we've again mako um it's where people rally and the uh, state health secretary um that was her her opening salvo her opening comment was not enough beds it's a and severe problem it's it's terrifying that you know and she talked about detention centers to the hospitals to recovery and quite honestly commissioner yeah. that's what we've become a hospital yeah. Right, yes right and uh, I don't know what the solution is um, there is a physical solution associated with it and that's where Mike was talking and that's why I asked the question if the state injects are they going to inject with money with beds but you know, you know yeah. the, the MAT um, program, program yeah. that we're mm -hmm. currently right non-funded or unmandated or non unfunded mandate, unfunded unfunded mandate. mandate. <laughs> yeah from the state we're currently doing with we have 55 current inmates on that program and, and that's not cheap in house so that's so. to give you some numbers 54 out of 154 inmates on a mat program that's also taken for staffing as well and medically speaking just the nursing staff saw over this past calendar quarter the first quarter over 3200 uh, sick calls right can the RSS be used more or is it full at capacity? Do we know? These are these are incarcerated. Incarcerated, but so so oh, those no. yeah, but so I thought that uh, we took some from no, incarceration no, no, no. to no bear with me, to the shoemaker house. We 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 did. There are times where they are court ordered treatment right. to the shoemaker house. And they came from incarceration to the Schumacher no no they're they're at Springfield not in not not our facility not RSS there are there were people who were they're not incarcerated they're there voluntarily with the state um, for for um, drug at, at RSS drug treatment that were in Schumacher were in 
Hitchman moved, or when Shoemaker moved to Hitchman, Hitchman's closed, and now they're in RSS. But none of them have been um, cr criminal. I okay. Um, I charged. stand corrected. I I did think that they were moved at yeah. times from incarceration to Shoemaker, and then Shoemaker folded, and now everything's RSS. Okay. There there are okay. there are forensic okay. patients at okay. Springfield State Hospital. Yeah, that's okay. That's, that's where they would go. Anywhere there's an open bed in the yeah. state. Okay. In the forensic system. In the it's forensic. A totally different. Yep. Okay. Okay. So yes, the plan is for us to finish everything, apply for the grant, and then come back to you later here in June with hopefully an award for everything. That's a huge Thank problem. You. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Nope. Thank you all Thank very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Much. Thanks for your Thanks support. For um, approval to submit uh, fiscal year 25 youth and family engagement diversion grant application and accept it. Good morning, Good morning. to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Ed, nice to see you again so soon. Yes. It's a pleasure to be on the uh, selection committee out in Tawny Town with you, Commissioner. So um, I'm joined this morning with Ed Singer, our local management board manager. I'm Celine Steckel, the director of Citizen Services, and we um, also have Corey Hardinger with us from the grants office. Um, and we are here today requesting approval to submit our FY25 Youth and Family Engagement Diversion application and accept the award. The Maryland Department of Juvenile Services um, has a behavioral health diversion initiative, and there are select jurisdictions throughout Maryland uh, that provide this service. The goal of this initiative is really to link youth with mental health that have mental health needs and their families to community resources and services to keep youth in their homes and keep them from becoming adjudicated in the criminal justice system. Um, this program has been in operation for several years here in Carroll County and I want to have Ed talk a little bit about how the local management board is involved with this. We are um, a pass-through funder for this initiative but we also provide monitoring so I'll let Ed speak to that and the amount of the grant. And there is no required county match. So commissioners, uh, Carroll County has participated in this program since 2019 and uh, thus far it's served um, about 200 uh, youth in, in Carroll County and their families. Um, Carroll County Youth Services Bureau has, uh, Youth Service Bureau has been the uh, sub-recipient of this grant since it started. Um, they provide behavioral health case management services for the youth and their families who are at risk at, or uh, currently involved with Maryland DGA, D, DJS system. Um, CCYSB staff assess the use, fa use and families' needs. They create action plans and facilitate linkages to community services identified during the uh, referral and enrollment process. Participants also have access to CCYSB's continuum of behavioral health services to further support their success. So, things that aren't necessarily funded through this DJS grant, there, there are a lot of services that uh, could potentially uh, help, these, uh, help these youth that are available through uh, YSB. Um, this FY25 state funding will continue uh, operation of the program, which is staffed by a full-time bachelor's level engagement manager and a supervising program director who is also a licensed clinical social worker. Um, key part of this uh, measure of program's uh, success is related to recidiv recidivism. I have a hard time with that word. And uh, the percentage of youth who are, um, who did not incur a new juvenile delinquent charge for one year after completing the program. And during the duration of this program, over 90% of the participants, uh, participating youth did not incur new charges after a year. Um, as a pass-through entity, as, as Celine mentioned, Carroll County Local Management Board provides program reporting and fiscal oversight. Uh, in, in March of uh, 2024, DJS contacted the LMB uh, with, with their uh, intent to renew this program with us in, in FY25. Um, DJS is the sole referral source for the uh, Youth and Family Engagement Diversion Program, and these referrals are often discussed at our local care team meetings where we often try to uh, draw a map for families to be able to get the services that they need in order for their uh, children to become successful adults. Um, the profile of the youth served is youth and their families are at risk of involvement or currently involved in Maryland's juvenile justice services. Uh, youth identified by DGS prior to or following uh, administration of mental health screenings 
to uh, identify behavioral health concerns, court ordered youth returning from, home, from, from out of home placements such as uh, detention, shelter, uh, RTC or group homes, and court ordered youth at risk of uh, violation of probation due to high risk behaviors. Um, CC, as I mentioned, CCYSB offers a full array of treatment services to the youth and their families referred through this program. Um, the LMB is seeking approval from the commissioners to submit and accept the award of this grant from DJS in the amount of $87,581 and there's no cost to the county. Motion to approve the submission of the FY25 Youth and Family Engagement Diversion Application and accept the award. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thanks, Thanks, Commissioners. Thank you yeah. both very much. Approval to purchase counseling services. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The office I thought of you'd be partying by now. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and well, this is my last official business. So oh, mm. I feel honored. <laughs> <laughs> the Office of Procurement, in cooperation with the Carroll County Department of Economic Development, requests your approval to purchase counseling services from the Small Business Development Center in the total amount of $75,000. This amount covers a period from January the 1st of this year through the end of the year, December 31st. This is a sole source purchase. SBDC will provide Carroll County Office of Economic Development monthly reports of outcomes, SPDC training and counseling outcomes. And this money has been approved in the FY24 budget. And I will turn it over to Denise to explain about the program. Yes. Uh, thank you, Maureen. And I do want to also offer my congratulations to you, you and your retirement. Um, we have really appreciated working with Maureen. And as everyone has said before, she's very professional and very helpful. Um, and I'm a little jealous that she's retiring, <laughs> but it's wonderful after 46 years. Um, it's just, um, you know, she's had a wonderful career here and, and has uh, represented the county very well. And so we appreciate her work and leadership in the Department of um, Procurement. So, and also offer my congratulations to Carrie moving forward and I hope yes. we'll continue to work well with the department. Um, as you know, it's a priority of the Board of Commissioners to provide small business services and really in Carroll County that um, includes almost everyone. Um, and so, you know, through the partnership with the Maryland SBDC, uh, we do provide those counseling services and you know, it's been a really great partnership over the years. And the uh, co counselor here, their certified counselor, Darren Payton, um, he has office hours in our department two days a week and is available on call and meets with clients wherever and whenever they need. So um, it's a, a really critical part of what we do in economic development. I don't know if you want me to go through all the stats. Um, if we don't need that, we just certainly don't have to. I have those available. I have annual statistics with regard to the number of counseling hours, number of new clients, um, number of business starts, number of job creations, number of loans. Uh, we get all of that data, and um, that is a critical part of what we offer as the Department of Economic Development to businesses in the community. And we do get the word out. We have Darren's picture in ads that we run in Carroll Magazine and locally so uh, we do promote that we go out to the business association meetings and uh, talk to them and as well as with the town visits that we're doing with economic development and pulling in um, SBDC you know to that um, so that we are offering those services and connecting his clients with development opportunities so it's it's a wonderful partnership and it's working very well Motion to approve the funding of $75,000 to SBDC for counseling services. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Opposed? Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Item five, uh, contract award for phase two Cape Horn Park lighting. I have some visuals here if you want. Sure. Yeah, you want to pass them out? Or? <laughs> I can I can pass them down and save you some time. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Good 
The Office of Procurement in cooperation with the Department of Recreation and Parks requests your approval for phase two of lighting at Cape Horn Park to finish the Musco field in the total amount of $227,381.43 to Eastern Sales and Engineering Company Incorporated. This purchase is being made through Charles County contract that was competitively bid. This amount is within the approved budget and no additional funds should be necessary. So this is the second phase of a project um, which we completed uh, the first phase in December. Um, phase one did all the heavy lifting for the second phase. Uh, we put in, you can see on the second sheet, we put in um, a transformer which supplies 500 amps of service to the park as well as the lighting control panel. And then here's an example of the existing lights on phase one on the, sec on the third sheet. Um, also in phase one, we actually did the wire runs for the lights for phase two, and we also put the foundations in. So essentially all we have to do for phase two is put in the poles and then the lights themselves and make the connection. Um, that's why it's much less expensive than the first phase was. Awesome. Motion to award a contract for lighting installation at Cape Horn Park to Eastern Sales and Engineering Company Incorporated in the amount of $227,381.43. Can I get a second? Uh, second. Second. And uh, we have a motion and two seconds. Um, any discussion, questions? When can we start lighting up Crimgold Park? Crimgold? Yeah. Well, um, that's not on the six year plan, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? We can make it. We can push all it those, up. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Yeah, that's, uh, oh, no. we'll have to yeah. talk about that. <laughs> I've heard that a number of times. Yeah, yeah, I bet you have. Take care. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, I put you on six, the spot like contract that. <laughs> renewal digital evidence management system. Morning. Good morning. Um, the Office of Procurement in cooperation with the Department of Technology Services requests your approval to renew the contract for Genetech clearance to Marathon Technology Solutions Incorporated in the amount of $87,583.80. The original contract was for three years as, and is now up for renewal for an additional three-year contract. Marathon Technology Solutions Incorporated was awarded a contract through the county's um, RFP that includes Genetech equipment. This cost has been approved in the fiscal year 24 budget and no additional funds should be necessary. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, Genetech clearance is a digital evidence management system that the Carroll County Sheriff's Office uses to securely store, share, and maintain chain of custody of uh, digital evidence. So using clearance uh, reduces the need for additional on-premise storage and all backups and system and cybersecurity maintenance is performed by Genetech. This is a cloud-hosted subscription service and renewing for three, a three-year period um, will save the county $11,250. Motion to award the contract for Genetech clearance renewal to Marathon Technology Solutions Incorporated in the amount of $87,583.80. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further comments, questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. Item seven, a contract renewal cohort instructional program at Carroll Community College. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Right. The Office of Procurement in cooperation with the Department of Human, Res Human Resources and Carroll County Sheriff's Office requests your approval to renew the contract with Carroll Community College for the cohort instructional program in the amount of $50,000. This program is for the Sheriff's Training Academy Police Entry Level Training at the college. This current payment will be up for 30 students to attend the program and acquire an AAS degree in law enforcement. After the successful completion of the program and five specific general education courses taught at the academy facility. The program was initially approved in 2019 with an ongoing contract which remains in place until terminated. Therefore, this request is for the yearly contract renewal. 
this amount is approved in the fiscal year 24 budget and no additional funds should be net required. Good morning. I'm here with Vicki from the Sheriff's Office. Um, as was indicated, this is a uh, collaboration between HR, the Sheriff's Office, and the Community yeah. College to provide uh, individuals that come on as sheriff deputies the opportunity to go through the, um, the training program, the police entry level training program, and then also to attain additional credits so that they do walk away with a um, associate of applied science degree in law enforcement. So uh, again, as indicated, this program started in 2019 and um, the amount is $50,000, and this does cover up to 30 students to participate in that program. I'll let Vicki talk a little bit about how that all works and, and how it's been going. So this truly is a partnership with the college and with, with HR. Um, the, it is bigger than just simply a cohort. Um, all of the recruits that come in go through um, our academy. They also have matriculated credits that they earn and they literally graduate with an AAS at the end of the academy. They could attend graduation um, at Carroll if they so choose. Depending on all of their prior credits, college courses, there's a lot of prep work to set it up that's all part of this program. The registrar, um, their staff goes through all of their requirements to see what credits they do have. Um, <clears throat> if they already have sufficient credits, they don't have to take I guess you would call them co-scheduled co classes. Um, they do go to Carroll. If they do need, let's say, an, another English or another math, one of the five classes that they didn't have any elsewhere. They're all considered whether they actually go through the cohort together um, in those additional five classes. <clears throat> they are um, all considered um, Carroll community students and our instructors. Um, we have a great partnership as part of that whole program going three so over the years it all depends how many recruits we have in the program what their college needs are <clears throat> what they already have etc motion to approve the contract renewal to carroll county community college for the cohort instructional program in the amounts of fifty thousand dollars second okay i have a motion and a second um i have one question so is this part of the training program or is this for our Carroll County deputies that have been through the training program. So it's for anyone that is in the current like PELT, the, the entry level academy class that we put on each year that starts in September. So Which has people other than our deputies. And be correct. Yes. yes. Okay. And, and just a follow up. So I, and I understand we don't have a fire academy, so this is apples and oranges, but we do work with the community college on ALS and paramedic training. Do we have anything? similar to that right now set up with the community college for people to try to not currently. take not currently i okay. think that is something that uh, chief robinson has spoken with them about and as we establish more of the department definitely something that we'll look okay. into whether or not that's an opportunity for us i met with president ball about that probably over a year ago <clears throat> and it's been kind of on the wayside but it's something we should certainly want we should certainly look at i would encourage okay. that so because uh, that's I know it's not again the same thing as having a mm -hmm. Academy, but It's a lot of hours mm -hmm. And it certainly is applied science. I would think so. Thank you we Just, just so questions, everyone comments? knows the county does have a, a tuition reimbursement program So that would help bridge some of that gap hopefully for folks who are interested in taking college courses while they're county employees yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, yeah. yes, we do have tuition reimbursement policy for any county employee outside of this, uh, you know, di in addition to this. So they could definitely, individuals that are employed now currently could definitely take um, courses on their own and receive reimbursement. That's a good, is it full reimbursement or is it a percentage? That's a good it's, point. It's up to what the federal government allows. It's, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know that. Okay, well, I'm glad you brought what, that up. I don't know though. what their tuition is and how it relates. It might not be quite full, but okay, that's, but I'm glad you brought that up. It's a good chunk of change. That's important. Several thousand dollars. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. <clears throat> um, item eight: approval to purchase uh, 14. 2025 Ford Explorer Police Interceptors. Morning. Morning. 
The Office of Procurement, in cooperation with the Bureau of Fleet Management and Warehouse Operations, requests your approval to purchase 14 2025 Ford Explorer police interceptors from Hertrick Fleet in the amount of $659,624. This purchase will be made from made from a Maryland blanket purchase order that Carroll County will utilize. This amount is within the fiscal year 24 approved budget and no additional funds should be necessary. So this request allows for the replacement of 14 uh, existing units in the sheriff's fleet. Uh, lead times for the new vehicles is between six and nine months. Upon arrival of the new units, the existing units will be decommissioned and sold through auction. Motion to approve the purchase of 14 2025 Ford Explorer police interceptors from Hertrick Fleet in the amount of $659,624. Second. Um, you know, we struggled with seconds. I'm sure you did. did. <laughs> I tell you, thanks. thanks. No problem. Happy uh, to help. I have a motion and a second. <laughs> Any further questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. It's true, actually. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> else has got to pick uh, up the weight. Three 2024 Dodge Durangos for the Department of Public Works. Sheriff's Department. Okay. That's for the Dodge Durangos. Yes, sir. Okay. That's, that's not what this says. Okay. Thank you. The Office of Procurement, in cooperation with the Bureau of Fleet Management and Warehouse Operation, requests your approval to purchase three 2024 Dodge Durangos from Hertrick Fleet in the amount of $135,022. This purchase will be made from a Maryland blanket purchase order that Carroll County will utilize. This amount is within the fiscal year 24 approved budget and no additional funds should be necessary. Uh, again, commissioners, these vehicles allow for the replacement of three existing units in the Sheriff's Fleet. And same timing? Uh, these actually we can expect a little bit sooner, so around four months. Motion to approve the purchase of three 20, 2024 Dodge Durangos from Hertrick Fleet in the amount of $135,022. Second. Any further questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, contract award Campbell Oil Company. <coughs> The Office of Procurement and the cooperation with the Bureau of Fleet Management and Warehouse Operations request your approval to award a term contract to Campbell Oil Company to cover the cost of ultra-low sulfur diesel with a truck transport delivery and winter blend ultra-low sulfur diesel with a truck transport delivery. This purchase will be made through Mon uh, Montgomery County IFB that was a reverse auction. This amount is within the fiscal year 24 adopted budget and no additional funds should be necessary. This contract, uh, as well as the next agenda item, allows for the bulk purchase of diesel fuel uh, that is delivered to the maintenance center and stored in our fuel station or fuel island. Uh, that fuel is um, distributed to uh, county vehicles and equipment as, long as, as well as partnering agencies. Um, the pricing that we are able to purchase the diesel fuel at is based on OPIS pricing, which is oil price information services. Uh, so essentially, we're able to purchase the fuel in bulk and at discounted pricing. Motion to award a term contract to Campbell Oil Company for ultra low, ultra low sulfur and winter blend ultra low sulfur diesel fuel. Second. Easy for you to say. I, I know. Um, I have a motion and a second. Any further questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Um, contract award James River Solutions. The Oscar. Office of Procurement in cooperation with the Bureau of Fleet Management and Warehouse Operations requests your approval to award a term contract to James River, James River Solutions to cover the cost of ultra-low sulfur diesel with a tank wagon delivery and winter blend ultra-low sulfur diesel with a tank, tank wagon delivery. This purchase will be made through a Montgomery County AFB that was a reverse auction. This amount is within the fiscal year 24 adopted budget and no additional funds should be necessary. Again, commissioners, this allows for the purchase of bulk diesel fuel at a discounted rate. Motion to award a term contract to James River Solutions for ultra low sulfur and winter blend ultra low sulfur diesel fuel. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Thank you. Thank you. And commissioners, I just wanted to speak on the tuition reimbursement. Uh, I took advantage of that program uh, a few years back, and it uh, was total full reimbursement for my bachelor's degree. Uh, so I'm very appreciative and grateful of those benefits that the county offers. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good, thanks. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Okay, now instead of buying, we're going to sell something. So uh, Kessler Building to uh, Carroll County Public Schools. <laughs> and, and I've mentioned this before. Several year, now a few years ago, you got them to buy the building across the street that, that had a failing roof and HVAC, and, yes. and, and I'm not sure if this is the same thing, but good job. <laughs> now I'm over here. No, don't now say I'm so. over Hold here up, now, the so good job. <laughs> good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. We're here to talk about the Kessler Building, located at 191 Schaefer Avenue in Westminster, uh, located right behind Plum Crazy Diner, if you're familiar. Uh, it opened up in 1955 as a shoe factory, um, almost 50 years in business. The building came out for sale, and Carroll County commissioners at the time decided to purchase it. Shortly after, Carroll County government executed an agreement with Carroll County Public Schools to share the space. Since then, public schools have been using about 70% of the building, and uh, the rest is used by our facilities group to store seasonal equipment, um, plows, snowblowers uh, in the summer, and lawn mowing equipment in the winter. And Carroll County Public Schools use the 70% of the space for their enterprise school lunch program. A while back, Carroll County Public Schools offered $2 million for the purchase of this building. This will allow them to expand their school lunch program, streamline operations, and provide additional space for, in, it, it, for weather staging. In response to the loss of space, Public Works is looking into a new uh, structure for their equipment at the maintenance center. Move the Board of County Commissioners approve the sale of the Kessler Building for $2 million. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Item lucky number 13, exercise option to purchase, um, add on to county easement at Panora Acres on Tracy's Mill Road. Hi, guys. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. I'll tell you, I thought we got up here early, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Try to keep you on your toes. Right? I know, right? I was like, wow, 13 already. Okay. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Um, we're here to exercise the option uh, to purchase an add on for Panora Acres Incorporated at 3001 Tracy's Mill Road in Manchester. Um, we're adding on 30.702 acres to the original easement at a cost of $198,622.20 which equates to $6,469.35 per acre. We're retiring four lot rights, and this is in District 2. Here's the property right along Tracy's Mill Road uh, with a picture of the add-on in yellow. Again, this is uh, 301, 3001 Tracy Mill Road, original county easement, 182.7 acres with an add-on of 30.7 at a cost of $198,000. $622.20 and retiring four lot rights. Here's how the property fits in with other preservation in the area. Original easement at 182.71 acres. The amended easement will be 213 acres, 213.412 uh, acres. So again, we're here to ex exercise the option to pur purchase Pernor Acres Incorporated property add-on 3001 Tracy's Mill Road in Manchester um, at a cost of $198,622.20. Your district. Oh, okay. So uh, I move the Board of Commissioners exercise an option to purchase and add on to the Panora Acres Inc. property easement in the amount of $198,622.20. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioners. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I may have someone getting in touch with you. Um, a gentleman has, he is an ag pres. I don't know what program, had, had a one lot. Mm -hmm. And I think he now wants his son to build on the lot. So 
I think there's options. He doesn't have to totally get out of it. He can modify it probably, right? Um, we'll see. I, I mean, depending on the easement, it could be a, a child's lot or owner's lot, or it could be an unrestricted lot. Um, once we get the request, we'll certainly okay. get him through the correct yeah. channels. Yep. And, and I'm just going to tell him uh, that's the total extent I know about it. They can contact you. Yeah, that's okay. That's the best way to go. <laughs> just give, give us a call and we'll get the process started. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Um, open admin, and we have a caller. Yes, sir. We have a caller online. If you could use star six to unmute yourself, please identify yourself where you're exactly you're calling from and give us your name. Thank you. Catherine Adelaide, Carroll County Republican Central Committee, calling from beautiful Carroll County, Maryland. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, thank you again for all your hard work uh, on all these so many issues. Uh, like many of you, I'm absolutely thrilled that the legislative session has finally ended and kind of sorting out. Um, I'm still collecting, figuring where everything has ended up. Appreciated um, Mike Fowler's. Uh, he certainly has made uh, my volunteer job easier. So um, I am still going to contact Senator Reedy's office. And um, the, the great thing I know for sure is we, we defeated assisted suicide. I always pay particular attention to life and death bills especially, you know, assisted suicide, abortion, and uh, the cannabis, which is a life and death bill. Um, so uh, I guess uh, from Central Committee News, uh, early voting began three weeks today, May 2nd. Uh, so we're extremely busy uh, monitoring and getting ready for that um, very exciting election year, as you all know. I uh, just wanted to say a quick sentence on the freedom to read porn. I I'm sorry, I mean the Freedom to Read Act. Um, I'm just going to say I think we all know what's going on here, and I hope that this board will actively support the school, the Board of Education, to uh, fight this. Um, it is definitely being brought into the school libraries as well as the public libraries. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to focus again a recap, you know, on the the cannabis. I appreciate the board's concern with local control rather than. Uh, regulatory control which they really don't have under federal law local control means that you will follow the federal law um also there was one of the commissioners mentioned um you know that really all other discussions are a distraction from the fact that it's a schedule one drug I remind you again that article two of the maryland constitution says that the judges and all the people are bound by the federal law so this is your rebuttal argument against the uh, voters referendum saying all these voters are for this people can't vote for something that's illegal so they have to also it's and our state constitution says all the people are bound by the federal law so i know that it's been using to do this i did not know that the new law that passed uh says you can't restrict outdoor growing and agricultural use this is just shocking and it reminds me of testifying in tawny town i don't know five to eight years ago specifically stating, I don't want to see the beautiful cornfields of Carroll County become the pot fields of Carroll County. So I always knew that they would get their toe in the door by saying, we're going to grow it all indoors. And then Cal I saw California started to grow it outdoors. And I just really learned today from Mike's um, presentation that you can't restrict outdoor growing in agricultural areas. So you can and you must for a recreational pot restrict that um, because it's illegal under federal law and if they make an issue out of it under medical you can also use the same law so i encourage you to um you know vote soon to ban this that it cannot be a permitted use um in any zone in carroll county pursuant to the controlled substance act of 1971. is my time up yeah yes yes please finish your thoughts okay. i was going to give you 15 more okay. seconds Thank you. All these mental health issues or self-medicating, so many of the other issues you're dealing with as commissioners always... are related to drugs. So this is the solution is to start pushing back on this because uh, it's just a, a wild, wild west, a free-for-all out there. More and more of it's going to be coming in. So I encourage you to um, push back on this uh, soon before anybody comes in here and tries to vest under the fake state law. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, open admin, does any, do any commissioners have any comments for open admin? No, sir. 
Is, I would. Christy, is that yes. is that why you're blessing I us just today? I love to sit here and listen to you. Um, yeah, you, one of uh, the reasons. Yes. You were here earlier. I was. Thanks for remembering. It was so long ago. Yes, yeah, so it was <laughs> more than 15 minutes, I think. I am here just to give you a real quick update on the employment expo that we had last evening, which I am absolutely thrilled with the outcome. Um, it started at five o'clock. We had um, people waiting at the door. I had to like hold off. We're not quite ready yet. The building just closed to the public. Let us get settled. We had um, about 90, 92 people come through. Um, and they worked their way through the entire first floor of the building, met with whatever department was there, people were engaged, um, left smiling and, and indicating that they learned a lot about what county government does and what positions we either have open right now or potentially have open. We received yesterday 27 applications in one day, which is outside of what our average applications are per day. Um, in addition to that, 24 people completed a profile in our career center. So we had our conference room set up with four laptops, and every time I circled around there, uh, people stopped in. Burke had a great time. Tim, Mr. Burke. Yes. Did, um, did, so you, did you hire him? No. <laughs> I saw him in line. Now. Don't ask me to do that. Either. I'm still down an attorney. Don't ask me to do that. <laughs> so we had people filling out applications as well as um, completing profiles. We helped them walk through that, told them to keep checking the website so they can continually um, you know, see what's open and just hit the uh, apply, apply button. <laughs> um, just one other point that I want to mention. Since you all uh, granted the authority to move forward with the referral bonus, um, which was the first week of March. We've had 46 applications received where they indicated they were referred by a, a county employee. So um, we're hoping awesome. that that's working um, as well. But just for the first year that, that we did this expo, um, I thought it was a great turnout. People heard about it through a variety of the, the means that we had sent it out, whether it was social media, whether it was um, you know, the, the Facebook page, social media, the road signs that were out front, our career, career site. So we have a debrief or hot wash, I think is as we sometimes refer to it, on uh, Monday morning, I think, next week. So we'll ask the participants from each department. There were about 40 county staff here that engaged with the, the individuals that showed up. So that was a great turnout as well. So. Um, I'm calling it a success. I think it went really great. Now I know why you're laughing because your mugshot was up there, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm sorry. Way too often. Yes, you're always in it. So, um, yeah, I thought it was great, and, and I really want to thank everybody that participated and everybody that attended. <laughs> there he is, entirely engaged in a conversation with and the liquor bottles. I was just going to say yes. something there. Oh, yeah. It was colored water. Yes. <laughs> and and uh, this morning, walking into the building, I don't know why I bumped into uh, half a dozen eight people, which is more than normal. Welcome, thank you. But um, many of them talked about last night. Great. They were excited about it. Great. Yep. And everybody helped clean up, and it looked like nothing happened here in the last night, right? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Congratulations. Awesome. Yeah, we're excited. It. I hope we can do it um, at least annually, and yeah. unless my staff tie me up, maybe even more frequently. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. That's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, very thank you much. to you and everybody who was part of that. Thank you. Yep. Sounds good. Have a good rest of the day. You Thank too. you. You Thank too. You. Okay. We're ready for agenda. Morning, Wanda. How are you? Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Um, Monday, April 15th, uh, National Work Zone Safety Day, Commissioners Kyler and Rothstein. Um, on Tuesday, April 16th, um, open session item one is the work session on the budget um, now at, at 9 a.m. there's planning and zoning in the Reagan room so does that mean we're meeting someplace else hmm. we're meeting no. here 311 are they are you okay so we're we're in this room we're for in budgeting on okay we'll be in 311 Yep. Okay. 
Um, 1 p.m. We're back in 311 for more work session fun. Wednesday, uh, Carroll Community College Board of Trustees meeting at 5 p.m. Commissioner Kyler, 7 p.m. ESAC, Commissioner Gehring. On Thursday, 8 a.m., closed admin, 9 a.m., we're going to honor Boy Scouts um, status scouting presentation for Carroll County. Um, item one. Um, seek input for creation of local orders that establishes eligible, eligible <laughs> uses for the community reinvestment and repair fund. Item two, uh, approval to award contract, uh, Charles Carroll Community Center summer camp. Item three, um, introduction discussion for comment letter for Westminster annexation. Item four, development rights and responsibility agreements, a briefing and discussion. Item five, federal IIJA carbon reduction grant funds. Item six, uh, public safety complex property. Um, public comment. Um, open admin, 1 p.m. Uh, proposed budget work session. On Friday, uh, joint BMC Board of Directors meeting, Commissioner Rostein, and at 6 p.m., Battle of the Books, pri private homeschool elementary extravaganza at the Montessori School, Commissioner Gordon. And uh, Commissioner Kyler has the podcast. Better tell Commissioner I, Kyler to get on that. I hope you're working on what, what I'm going to say. I could come up with something pretty quick. Um, Monday, April 22nd, nothing. Mon uh, Tuesday, April 23rd, um, another work session on, no, actually, this is the release of the proposed budget, we hope, right? Yes. Um, um, Commissioner Guerin has a town hall that night at 6.30. So we, so that's, we, we, that's been postponed. Say again. That's been postponed, oh, okay. so we can take so, that off. And I don't think we ever sent out an email regarding that either. Is so okay. Yeah, that's going to be sometime in May, it, so we can take that off. And more power to you, but it's been a rough day to do it. That's what I was told. <laughs> that's what I was advised. <laughs> so I'm. Wednesday, that. April twenty fourth, Veterans Appreciation Dinner at uh, Freedom District Lions Club. Commissioners Kyler and Rostein. Thursday, April twenty fifth. Uh, closed admin um, at 9 a.m. Friday Carroll third annual veteran celebration at Carroll County wait what what did I get wait what I'm a third annual veteran celebration wait what am I missing priority Carroll right. oh it's okay all right <laughs> I was thinking about the actual May 5th yes. oh okay. no 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 okay I got lost for a second <laughs> sorry, sorry. sorry. Um, daydream for a minute and you on the wrong train totally right oh, oh no, no i wasn't i promised i wasn't daydreaming i was following along and i was like wait a second what is this <laughs> yep. um item one food processing residual residuals and dissolved flotation residuals and uh that's the public that hearing. is the public hearing and that day we can make a decision or it stays open for 10 more days you're just moved oh wait Okay. This is the public hearing. You can, you can leave the rec you should leave the record open for. So the record should be yeah, there, no decision that day. The record will stay open for. Good. You should leave it open, but you. No, could. this is one of the ones where you have to. It's a, you do this have is the, to. Okay, I apologize. This is for the moratorium. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, item two: comment letter for Westminster annexation. Item three: uh, submit application, accept award for a carbon reduction grant funds. Item four, uh, a briefing request for a public hearing, spring amendment to uh, 2023 water sewer master plan, public comment, open admin, Friday and Saturday show nothing, and Commissioner Gordon has the podcast. Any, uh, we, we rescheduled one event beyond that, no changes? Nope. nope. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Wanda. Thank you, Wanda. Now, I need a motion to adjourn. Uh, until recess until. Recess. Yes. Motion to recess until 1 o'clock. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you.